Good morning, everybody. I made a mistake last week. I did not introduce the uh, guest pastor. I will not make that mistake this morning. I think he's running for political office anyway after the way he's been going through the congregation. <laughs> That's David Diesel. He and I first met when he was the pastor over in Homer and I was doing the prison ministry. Uh, and then he moved from there to uh, uh, First Church in uh, Bossier and retired from there eight years ago. I would ask you to look at the back of your bulletin. There's three things I want to highlight. Again, the, the dinner with friends. That's on uh, June the 6th at 6. And their great entertainment is Jake Cooley. Uh, and I understand from Reba that he's a Cracker Jack. Uh, the uh, Bluegrass Band will play for the 4th of July celebration. And their rehearsals are Sunday afternoon from 4 to 6. Vacation Bible School. The last day to register is June the 3rd. This is the first Sunday of the month. If we have some uh, June birthday folks, would you come up forward? It's hard to believe with this many folks here. All right. Uh, oh. <laughs> Jim Miller, June 18th, down them stairs so much last week I, the whole week long I was a pity baby pity pity uh, please join me for our opening prayer thank you father for the beauty of this day and all our many blessings we ask that you be with brother Brad and all the counselors and youngsters at Camp Caney May they all return with a richer relationship with you. Please comfort the Glass family as they mourn the loss of Rod. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let's sit back and be blessed with some music.
There wasn't but one thing wrong with that song. It's too short. We could just say amen and go home. Please stand for our opening hymn. Please join me in the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please come forward. Please bow your heads in prayer. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to share with others. Let this offering be used in a manner that will glorify you. Bless each gift. And bless each giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He said that where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And your heart stays where you hide your greatest love. Now you can leave that love on earth where thieves may steal tomorrow or take it to that hiding place of There's a treasure at the end of this narrow road I'm traveling, and it gives me a purpose for life. Jesus. 
Jesus is my treasure. He's the reason that I'm living. And he's going to be my reason when I die. So if you've been He's left a map for you and me to use. Just read the map and follow close. Always walking where it's showing. You just can't miss it. It's way too much to lose. Now there's a treasure at this narrow road I'm traveling and it gives me a purpose for life Jesus is my treasure he's the reason that I'm living and he's gonna be my reason when I There's a treasure at the end of this narrow road I'm traveling, and it gives me a purpose for my life. And Jesus is my treasure. He's the reason that I'm living. He's going to be my reason when I Please bow your heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we have come to you today looking for comfort, inspiration, and guidance in our quest for sanctification. Help each of us to be more like Jesus, following in his footsteps and striving for perfection. When we fall short in sin, let us be quick to ask for forgiveness. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, I guess it's my turn. Uh, can you hear me okay? I, I wish that I had the preaching voice that Brother Brad has. Uh, I was with him yesterday at the funeral, and, and his voice, you know, is partway to James Earl Jones, you know. It's just, just a 
great preaching voice and and it carries and and I've got this um, wiggly wobbly voice that I don't know if it gets out there so um, if you if you uh, if you can't hear just do something like this and if you don't want to hear just go to sleep there and that'll, <laughs> and that'll be okay now I, there's a little bit of housekeeping first I noticed the next service doesn't start till 10.30. Now, I'm just assuming there's Sunday school in there, or do I get to preach till uh, 10.50? Okay, okay, there's Sunday school. I, okay, okay. Um, but I, I certainly want to um, thank you uh, for the privilege of being here. Thank Brother Brad. I thank uh, Brother Brad for allowing me to come um, to address I know they're not his people, but to address his people, um, it's, uh, he's taken a chance, you know, to just let anybody come in, and, uh, and I thank him so much, and um, I don't want to brag on you guys, um, uh, I don't know much about the, uh, the Benton Church, but my impression yesterday at uh, Rod Glass's funeral was just overwhelming the um, hospitality that this church y'all I know y'all had a bunch of folks come in that uh, didn't normally don't normally worship here um, but uh, you're you're taking care of that service and and uh, all the things was just so uh, was just amazing uh, so just I'm bragging on you just a little bit and hope I don't uh, embarrass you by by doing that Okay, now a word from our sponsor. Um, the um, scripture text, oh, and, and uh, Fuzzy uh, said that he was in, um, he was in Homer uh, for a Kairos ministry. That's the prison David Wade correctional and I went to that several times but they let us both out uh, and so we're uh, we're able to uh, to be around that never goes old does it I tell that all the time yeah I went to prison but they let me out but um, anyway glad to be here the um, scripture text stri scripture passages from Exodus chapter 24 verses 12 through 18 as I begin to read it you'll recognize uh, this passage. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and stay here, and I'll give you tablets of stone with the law and commands I have written for their instruction. Then Moses set out with Joshua his aide, and Moses went up to the mountain of God. And he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we come back to you. Aaron and her are with you, and anyone involved in a Dispute can go to them. So when Moses went up on the mountain, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai. For six days the cloud covered the mountain, and on the seventh day the Lord called to Moses from within the cloud. To the Israelites, the glory of the Lord looked like a consuming fire on top of the mountain. Then Moses entered the cloud as he went up on the mountain. And he stayed on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. Pray with me just a moment, please. Heavenly Father, again, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon us here. Lord, that we may hear from you today that these words may become your word. And that your word would have its proper effect in our hearts. We pray this believing in Jesus' name, amen. Now, I'm going to ask a question. Please don't answer out loud. Um, what did you expect when you came here this morning? Maybe the question ought to be, why would you come? That might be enough. Why would you come today? Uh, Maybe you didn't have breakfast and you thought that there would be some snacks. Or, or the, did the Methodist men have breakfast this morning? Okay, maybe that you came to the Methodist men and, uh, and uh, just didn't have anything else to do, so you just stayed over. 
Um, but that reasoning, you know, if you hung around, that reasoning is not without precedent. precedent uh, several great things happened in the scripture surrounding a meal. So I mean, that would be all right, you know, the feeding of the multitudes and, of course, the Passovers and such. And uh, so uh, that would be all right. Why'd you come? Maybe you came to visit with friends. Fellowship is, certainly is a big part of what we do in the church house. That's, that's part of what we do um, and part of what we do as Christians. Um, now, my story about fellowship, um, Kay and I, um, I used to go to church as a high schooler. We're high school sweethearts, be married 52 years tomorrow. The, um, um, and she needs prayer, continues to need prayer. Everything's going good, but I'm just a handful, so pray for Kay. But anyway, we, were, we are high school sweethearts, and, and I don't ever remember being dragged to church. I went, always went church, to church gladly because I knew I could get to see Kay there and not have to count it as a date you know, with, uh, with my mom and dad. Uh, and, uh, and maybe we even got to hold hands if her daddy didn't catch us. But, that was, and, but that's not fellowship. That's not fellowship. But fellowship's a big part of, uh, of what we do as believers. Maybe you, came, maybe you came today with a burden. That something was just weighing you down and you just said, you know, <laughs> I gotta go to church today. I'm tired, um, and I need to lay my burden down. And maybe that's why you came, and that's, and that's also a good reason to have come, that uh, uh, we are to bear one another's burdens and thus fulfill the law of Christ. Maybe you came with a celebration, just something bubbling over, and you just have to tell somebody. I gotta, I gotta tell somebody. I gotta testify. That's what you do in church. You, you know, you testify. I just gotta tell somebody about well, what the Lord's done for me, and and uh, and that's a good thing to tell, and because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Maybe you came to be lifted up by the ministry of music, which we certainly were are this morning at the. Um, um, the music this morning was exceptional, and music. Can I get a witness? Okay, it's all right. All right. Now, if you if you encourage me much, uh, we may stay till ten thirty. But uh, um, but I heard that they're going to use this space for another service, so y'all have to get out then. But uh, that's just a lie. I'm the, that's. Um, but the music, music and poetry sometimes speak to our hearts uh, in a way that, that, uh, that teaching and preaching uh, don't always do it. And I certainly know that you um, regularly experience and enjoy uh, spirit-filled music in this ministry. Maybe you came today expecting to hear one of Pastor Brad's inspiring sermons and you were disappointed when you found out he wasn't going to be here, but you were too embarrassed to sneak back out to your car and leave. You know, that's I'm just, uh, but why did you come? Why did you come? Did you come this morning? Did you come this morning expecting to meet God? We have to be careful asking that question. Sometimes we... Uh, that's so close to our hearts that we kind of make a joke. Well, I really didn't come to meet God. I just didn't have anything else to do, and I thought I'd waste some time here at the church. You know, no, 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 no. What did you expect? What did you expect this morning? Did you come expecting to meet God? Our text this morning is, um, it occurs on a mountaintop. Moses is there, and he's called by God to that place. And I strongly suspect, because he was called by God, I strongly expect that he expected to meet God there. And have you, you've probably never heard uh, my definition of, of worship. Worship is um, connecting people to God and God to people. 
worship happens when people connect to God and God connects with people. And, and Moses had that personal encounter with the holy, with the divine, with the spirit, with God himself. And when that happens for us, we have that same experience, don't we? We, we feel uh, that personal connection to God. Did you come today with the intention of worship? Did you come expecting to meet God, to be connected with God? So God calls Moses up on the mountain, and there's a gang of them, and he tells the elders, said, y'all wait here. And then he goes on up a little ways, and then it's just Moses by himself, and he goes to the mountaintop. And God and Moses was expecting to receive something from God. God told him, you're going to receive the tablets, the stone tablets, the Ten Commandments. But once Moses got to the mountaintop, did you see that? He had to wait. Moses was the undisputed leader of the Israelites. There was no one bigger. Moses was bigger back then than Benjamin Netanyahu is today. He was, he was a man for whom time was precious. He left the elders waiting for him when he arrived on top of the mountain. And then the glory of the Lord in the form of a cloud settled on the mountain. And Moses was there and nothing happened. <laughs> nothing happened. Six days Moses waited on God outside the cloud. <laughs> what would you do? What would we do? What would I do, I think, in, in such a situation? I tend not to wait very well. Uh, Kay doesn't wait very well either, but she waits. she's got a lot more practice because she waits on me. And I was almost late this morning, by the way, but that's just an aside that uh, anyway. But um, uh, sometimes... For me, waiting is kind of like standing in a fire ant bed barefoot, you know. You just, just get, oh my goodness, yes, I just I can't wait. I don't want to wait. Really, though, have you ever been where you knew you were supposed to be and you were, knew you were supposed to be in the presence of the Lord, but all you see is cloud? And don't you want to hurry things up a bit? Maybe, maybe it's just me. You know, Lord, I'm here. Uh, I'm where I'm supposed to be. I, 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 you call me here, and you got 10 minutes to show up, Lord. You got, you know, uh, after all, you know, I, we all have loads of things to do. I went to a preacher's retreat once. We had... Um, Appointed times of worship, and we had quiet times, and, and uh, fellowship times, and we had times, small group times. But in this particular time of worship, they had a, they had a worship band, and, and they were marvelous. They just, if I remember correctly, it was in Nashville, so you can imagine the musicians that they had there at the, at the worship band. But anyway, they were there at a point in time, stirring music, there was anointed preaching. And then in one of the services, at one point in the service, everything just went silent. The uh, musicians stopped playing, and... Um, the leader quit. Uh, the uh, keyboard didn't play. And, you know, I looked at my order of worship and said, there was no mention of silence or meditation time. And uh, we all looked around. There was a bunch of preachers. Did I say that? Most of them were preachers. And, and we kind of all looked around to see who messed up, you know. Uh, uh, did the... Did the uh, 
did the media guy forget to, uh, forget to play the video? You know, what's supposed to be happening? Did the next speaker miss, miss the cue? Uh, what's, what's happening? And, and it was only, uh, we found out afterwards, and I thought, you know, we, as a preacher, I'm thinking, well, he should have at least said, now we'll come to our time of silent meditation, so it told us what to do. But because just naturally... None of us, well, maybe some of them, maybe some of the more contemplative types. Um, but I don't think many of us said, oh, this is the time that we can just be quiet before the Lord, naturally. We all said, you know, something needs to be going on. I can't just wait on the Lord because... Who would want to wait on the Lord and renew their strength and mount up with wings as eagles and run and not be weary and walk and not faint? Who would want to do that? Just wait on the Lord. Hmm, that's part of what worship is, you know. Moses went up there, and I was speaking tongue-in-cheek, by the way, because we do want to wait on the Lord and renew our strength and mount up with wings as eagles and run and not be weary and walk and not faint, don't we? Well, Moses was on the mountaintop six days waiting on God to do whatever it was God was going to do. And then on the seventh day, God beckoned Moses to enter the cloud. I suspect that was somewhat scary. Um, you've driven in the fog before, haven't you? Uh, some of you may have even flown in clouds before. That's a, that's a scary thing when you can't really see what's going on around you. And to those back at the base, what was up there looked like an all-consuming fire. Maybe it was a little scary. But certainly, certainly the power of God was present. And as Moses entered into this encounter with God, that worship, that intimate fellowship with God, that connecting with God and God connecting directly with Him. I'm thinking, what a worship time that was. It was 40 days and 40 nights. I, uh, we, I've heard of other churches in other places get antsy when you go over an hour in a worship service, you know. I know that's not here, but there are other churches I've heard about. Um, but uh, 40 days and 40 nights with God in the presence of... Have you ever been in a worship service where you know you're in the presence of God? Where you know that Jesus is there, where you know that the Holy Spirit, you feel the Holy Spirit ministering among you. And, and, and sometimes when those things, or at least for me, when those things happen, it just kind of gets hard to breathe. It's just so intense, so strong. I've been in a few services like that. I remember on the United Methodist Congress on Evangelism, the um, Dr. Terry Tagel, I don't expect you to know that name. He was the primary speaker, but he preached about uh, preached from the Revelation, and he reminded. And again, most of these were preachers out here. He reminded us that in uh, in the Revelation, um, he said, you know, to the preachers, we better get comfortable with worship. Because from the pictures in the scripture of the Revelation, the pictures of heaven uh, from the Revelation, worship is most of what we're going to be doing up there. And as he preached, though, I felt that he was talking to me. Have you ever felt like that? So why don't you just call my name, preacher? Yeah. <laughs> just, I felt like he was talking to me. But apparently everybody, many more, thought that too because he he challenged us to step out into the aisle and come forward for prayer. And when he did, the, practically the whole body pressed forward. And I was one of those hundreds. I felt the Holy Spirit move in my heart in a, in a strong way that I had not felt. Uh, this was 20 years ago, but I had not, 
gosh, longer than they had not felt that way in a long time. And I wondered if that might have been how Moses felt when he was invited to come into the cloud. I was hesitant, but I knew I would meet God. And we do in worship, other places, other places. Happens on the mountaintop. But actually, wherever folks worship in spirit and in truth, the mountaintop's there. You're in the mountaintop. And I pray that every one of us has at least one mountaintop experience with the Lord before we go to meet Him face to face. I hope it happens here. I hope, uh, we, and it will happen when we come expecting. And if it hasn't one day yet, it will. In our passage, the trip up the mountain for Moses was to get further instructions on how to honor God. And in his worship, this mountaintop experience, it happened. Moses came with the expectation of meeting with God and receiving something from God. Well, when we come with the expectation of meeting Jesus and receiving something from Jesus, we're more apt to see that happen. Because Jesus promised where just two or three are gathered, you can read about it in Matthew, uh, where just two or three are gathered in his name, that he'll be among them, just a few, his presence. Did you come? with the expectation of meeting Jesus this morning. Are you here to connect with Jesus and Jesus with us? Are you here knowing that the Spirit of Christ will be with us? When we connect with, with the Lord in worship without veneer, uh, we're close enough to Him that the cloud does not obscure our vision. Jesus meets us at the point of need. He meets us, you know, we may be tired. Uh, do you ever get tired? Just tired. He meets us at the altar with vitality. Do you ever get discouraged? He meets us with encouragement, builds us up. Do you ever get just caught in the turmoil of life? Maybe self-inflicted or it's swirling around you. Well, you know, when we meet with Him, we meet with the one who commands winds and waves. And just says, peace, be still. Do you ever come and, and, and need a halftime pep talk? <laughs> I was listening this morning to the Bible says my king is the king of the Jews. Look that up sometime on, on uh, YouTube, S.M. Lockridge. Uh, that's my king. Anyway, that's free. Uh, that uh, uh, um, doesn't cost any. That's, that's extra today. There. It's a pep talk. He restoreth our souls, fills us with love, joy. Hope. You know, great and powerful things happen when people connect with the author of the universe. You know, you know sometimes uh, when you meet with him, you're ready to, uh, to whip whatever giant is in your way. And, and with just a stone and a, and a sling and, and God on your side. And sometimes the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Do you ever long for things like that to happen in your life? Let's pray. Lord God, we are so grateful um, that when we can plug into you, when we can connect with you, Lord, when we do connect with you, great and powerful things happen. And you know us probably better than we know ourselves. And you'll 
meet us at our point of need or meet us at our point of celebration. And you'll lift us up or celebrate with us. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you do that today as we prepare this moment for to receive Holy Communion. I pray that your presence would be with us in a special way today. We pray all this in the sweet name, the strong name of Jesus. Amen. We will have a time of Holy Communion uh, today. Um, I want to remind you that uh, you can read that, can't you? Remind you that uh, Christ invites all to his table. Um, all who uh, accept Jesus as Savior and Lord, all who believe in him, uh, he invites us to his table. Uh, the uh, old liturgy said something about uh, those who earnestly repent of our sorrow, of our sins and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. I don't know if I've ever been involved with a misdoing, but uh, I know about sin. Uh, we pray for forgiveness. So therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we've not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We've not done your will. We've broken your law. We've rebelled against your love. We've not loved our neighbors, and we've not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to God. Blessed are you, O God, who with your word and the Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. You raised from the dead this same Jesus who now reigns with you in glory and poured out upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night before meeting with, with uh, death, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts that in the breaking of the bread and the drinking of this juice, we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by Christ's blood until Christ comes in final victory. And we feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen.
at the singing of this hymn, if there are those that wish to unite with this fellowship of the Methodist Church, to maybe you've been coming for a while and you um, say, you know, today's the day we need to do this. I'd invite you to come. If, um, if you have any unfinished business with the Lord that you haven't already taken care of uh, in this time of Holy Communion, I'd invite you to come and spend some time at the altar of the church, altars uh, here on the chancel rails and in prayer. If you need someone to pray with you, well, just let me know. If not, I'll just leave you there to, uh, uh, to pray as, you, as you'd like. And we'll sing. Uh, we've got to stand for the, this is the national anthem of heaven. You might not have known that. This is the national anthem of heaven. Amazing grace. Thank you. 